I am here today in Bath outside the station. Uh, day of action about the strikes going on today in the public sector. And loads of people here, CU, RMT, Auslev, Acorn. You can see it's pretty well attended. More people join all the time. My name is Dai Moon. I'm the branch president for the University of Bath UCU Union. I'm Cliff Williamson. I'm the chair of Baspa University UCU branch. So we have the two universities standing shoulder to shoulder, both out on strike, alongside every other university in the country, alongside half a million workers across different areas. We're on a strike over pay and conditions, and also some of us over pensions. Is it bad? Yes, it is. The simple fact of the matter is, since 2009, our wages have fallen comparatively by a quarter. Yeah. That is unsustainable and we consider that around 40 percent of all university staff are on fractional or casualised contracts. That is a considerable dilution of earning power and the ability to cope through hard times. And so therefore at the moment it's all about pushing back on this, you know, we all got to get take cuts together whilst millionaires have got tax dodging opportunities to ensure justice across the board. Yeah. Essentially, workloads are up, pay is down, people are working on gas, and um, it's a bit of a cost of living crisis. It's not sustainable, enough is enough. And the message really it says, well for our students, is like, it's our working conditions are their learning conditions. We're all in this very much together. So all the uh, support from the public, etc., is just a huge, and it has been fantastic today. You know, the, the cars constantly honking, etc. It feels like something has changed. And, and from students as well. Yeah, they are absolutely. very much in the vanguard of the support of the strikes for lots of different reasons because they recognise, as Daya said, that uh, our working conditions are the learning conditions, and so therefore they appreciate what we're doing. They know the sacrifice which is being made, and that they have their own agenda as well, which is to put back, push back against fees, push back against the cost of living crisis, which has been felt by the lowest paid and, and also by the million or so students that is in the UK. Thanks guys. My name is Steph Kasprowski. I am uh, the chair of the Unite Southwest Regional Committee and I'm here today because really we've had enough. There is a huge cost of living crisis. Prices are going up and we are not getting a fair pay for uh, the work that we do and enough is enough really and um, that's why we're here today because we want to say that the government needs to do something about it actually we need to get that Tory government out of parliament so we can get properly elected people that actually care about the working class thank you very much thank you very much And any other BUs that are here? <laughs> I was chatting to my wife last night, and we were discussing a new rug. I believe it or not, a new rug. And I said to her, I said, we can't afford it. She said, why can't we afford it? I said, I've had four years without pay rise. Inflation's gone up by nearly 17% in those four years. I haven't seen a penny extra in my pay, in my income. We can't afford it. Was there any other reason? Well, I've been out on strike for 18 days as well over the last six months. We can't afford it. How many conversations like that are happening in families around us here? I'm sure you've all spoken about the, the problems that we face. Well, our problems are really nothing at the moment compared to 
the Luddites in 1812, who stood up for their rights. And what did they do? They hung them at St. Peter's Field in Manchester. In 1820, they rode us down on horses with swords. In Tollpuddle, they enslaved us and sent us to Australia. The general strike of 1847, they shot us. In the Paris Commune, they killed 20,000 working class people. And the Prime Minister of this country, Disraeli, to his shame, said, we'll reform trade unions, reform up, revolution down. They were scared. In the Taftville rail strike, they sued us and took all our money as trade unions. The South Wales miners, they shot in all the disputes. And in Liverpool, with a general transport strike, they sent gunboats to Liverpool to shut us up. After the, after the First World War, there were 50 mutinies within the armed forces in this country. 50, because they wouldn't send them home after the war, because the government was scared of the workers, and you are the workers, we are the workers. We've suffered two world wars where the trade unions, I think, have been very reasonable. We suspended most of our strike action and fought for the country and worked for the country during those times. We've now just gone through a three-year pandemic where the trade unions have been reasonable. We've done our best for the country. This government does not want to give us anything. Thatcher made it impossible for us to organise, restrictive anti-trade union laws. She used the police against the miners. They used batons on the miners. And it's to our shame that even a Labour government was part, part of the move to make it illegal for prison officers to take industrial action. Every time through history they've attacked us. Every time. I'm fed up with it. I'm absolutely fed up with it. And we can write, we can write as many petitions as we like. We can write to our MPs. But the only way they're going to listen to us again is like our forefathers did. And we stand up and we let it be known that enough is enough. We need to defend the right to strike. And we need to do it from this day forward. And with regards to that, a couple of very nice politicians, Anne-Marie Trevelyan and Jacob Rees-Mogg, in, in October 2022, they put forward a bill to Parliament to restrict the right of transport workers to take industrial action. They threatened us with the sack, and Shank Craps supported that. And now Shank Craps has decided that that bill is no longer targeted at transport workers. It's targeted at the FBU, you teachers, the nurses, the ambulance people. It's targeted against everybody. They down and beat us into the ground yet again like they've done for 150, 200 years. Well, you're the people to stop it. I'd like to wish you solidarity and up the workers. Thanks, Robin.
And next up we have Steph from Unite. Give her a big hand please comrades. Good afternoon everybody. My name is Steph Kasprowski and I'm the chair of the Unite Southwest Regional Committee. I come here today in solidarity for all the strikers. <laughs> this government is trying to us to limit our rights to protest. I think you all agree with me, we've got to stand and we've got to say enough is enough. Yeah. We've got a huge cost of living crisis and the fat cats are getting fatter while well, actually our bank accounts are getting thinner. What are they doing? They're trying to enslave us, comrades. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to make us work they're trying to make us work until we drop. And I say, enough is enough. I say, we've got to take to the streets. We've got to demonstrate. And we've got to use our right while we're having it. We've got to make sure that our children have got this right as well. Because we shouldn't forget that we're not just doing that for us. We're doing it for the future generations. So please come back to your workplaces, come back to your communities and come back and just talk about it. Just make sure that people understand why we're here today and also what we need to do. And solidarity. Thanks, sir. Um, we've got a speaker from UCU. Two speakers from UCU. Solidarity, yeah, we've got two UCU branches here for the price of one. Uh, so myself first, my name's Di, I'm the branch president of UCU uh, University of Bath. Hey, I'm Cliff Williams and I'm the chair of the Bath Spa University of UCU. Um, I'm going to keep this short. All I wanted to say is they turned out young people weren't voting for them. They made it harder to vote. It turned out that people were protesting against them, they made it hard to protest. It turns out people are out on strike, they're making it hard to strike. There's a pattern going on here, <laughs> and we have to fight back against it. Otherwise, beyond that, solidarity with all striking workers from all the different unions, and that's all I've got. Thanks, guys. I don't have any much more to add than what has been said before, but I think it's very important to reflect our comrade from the RMT put it in its context. We've had 200 years of struggle. We have won so much over that time. It's an extraordinary that we're having to fight these battles again. That we have to fight for the right to unionise. That we have to fight to ensure the immunity from prosecution for those strikes. And we have to fight once more to stop the state destroying the unity of working people. Those struggles took 200 years. We won them then, we'll win again. That is guaranteed. What we're seeing today is a restoration of a movement which they thought they had defeated. We are back and we're going to keep winning for working people to ensure social justice, to ensure the future of the earth, and all the struggles that are so needing restoration and resolution. This is a great turnout today. It's just the start. Keep fighting, comrades. The future is bright. Thanks for that solidarity. And again, speakers, um, it's Jane from Bath Campaigns Network. A big hand, please. Hello everyone, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, first of all, I'd like to uh, say I am so happy with my new name. Yeah. Thank God for the NHS. Yeah. Thank God for the NHS. And I have new lenses in my eyes. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm a new bionic woman. <laughs> so, um, yes, I'd like to say thank you to XR for coming out. Um, 
Always amazing and great to see you. Thanks, Amber. And we need to talk about Starman. Where is he? What does he stand for? Will things radically change if he wins the next election? Will things radically change if he wins the next election? Why, why does he forbid Labour MPs to attend picket lines? Why is he so mealy-mouthed on the subject of the strikes and protests? With the new legislation, they will be able to arrest you for protesting that your work does not pay enough to feed your family. They can arrest you for protesting that your work does not pay enough to heat your home. They can arrest you for protesting that your government is corrupt. So where is Starman? Why isn't he shouting from the rooftops? But no, like Johnson, Truss, and now Sunak, he fails to recognize that trade unions and the right to strike are a central part of what Britain is about. It's not just died in the wall socialists like Mick Lynch, who call him out for his lack of support for trade unions. Peter Oborn, an award-winning conservative journalist and commentator, is highly is highly vocal on the subject. I'm borrowing some of his lines from his latest article for the Middle Eastern Eye. Atlee, not Blair, must be Starmer's inspiration. The age of Atlee. Post-war Clement Atlee's achievements were radical and profound. He established British late social democracy. He created the modern welfare state and the National Health Service. Then Thatcher and Reagan began an epoch of neoliberalism, defined as free markets and the sale of share assets. But even Thatcher, even Thatcher, never dismantled the Attlee model. Her legacy was guaranteed in 1997 with the victory of Tony Blair's New Labour. Rather than restore Attlee's vision, Blair embraced that Thatcher's vision and continue the privatization of public services. And now, after 12 years of vile Tory rule, our system is failing. In Britain, neoliberalism has degenerated. In Britain, neoliberalism has degenerated into a system of state plunder by members of a financial elite. Atlee's idea of public domain and baffled, though not destroyed under Thatcher and Blair, is under systemic and brutal assault. So where is Starmer? And what is he doing about it? He has taken over the Labour Party at a turning point in history, when under a corrupt government, the dominant ideology of neoliberalism has collapsed. Yet, in his three years at, as opposition leader, Starmer has done everything he can to prop up a failing system. What are his plans for the National Health Service? He has adopted the hardcore neoliberal position that the NHS must reform or die, with the private sector given a larger role, a position already championed by the Shadow Health Secretary, Wes Streeting. Starmer will set us firmly on the route to an American insurance-based privately run system where those that can't afford treatment can put up and shut up, reform or die. Sorry, I meant reform and die. <laughs> he even set out this new position in the Daily Telegraph, a paper so far to the libertarian right that it even supported Liz Truss's calamitous budget. And it's the same with trade unions. Starmer has refused to support this winter's strikes and banned Labour MPs from appearing on picket lines. Even though opinion polls show that many of the strikes enjoy a great deal of sympathy from the public. So it seems that Starmer has made a strategic decision to fight the coming election on Tory terms, as a supporter of neoliberal policy policies, but as someone who can manage them better. So here's Starmer's defense. He is not seeking doctrinal purity. His ruthless objective is to win the next election, whatever the means. 
His prime target is the middle of the road conservative voters who are repelled by the incompetence, corruption and personal greed of Sunak's morally derelict conservatives. The opinion poll suggests this policy is working. One Nation conservatives, led by the former conservative Chancellor Ken Clark, say they want Starmer to win. We are in deep crisis, but like Blair, Starmer is neurotically cautious, endorsing his opponent's economic policies. Like Blair, he behaves as if his main opposition is the Labour left. And above all, the unions. Like Blair, he is guided by focus groups, a reason why his policies are almost identical to Sunak's. This may help him to win the next election, but it is not leadership and sets him up to fail. The British state has entered its deepest crisis since Clement Attlee was elected Prime Minister three quarters of a century ago. There is a historic opportunity to, like Attlee, bring real change by restoring morality to public service and rebuilding Britain. He has a real chance to tackle the climate emergency an emergency brought about by the very system which he is propping up. He stands no chance, however, if he continues to embrace a bankrupt political and economic model. He has a golden opportunity to bring down the most dishonest and morally corrupt government in modern history, in British modern history. Instead, he wages war, he wages war on his own party engaging with Sunak in a conspiracy of lies about Corbyn that unites them and alienates trade unions who founded the Labour Party. What a deeply shameful and stupid dereliction of duty. When he fails to bring a radical change that we need, the door is open to an even more far-right government, a fascist government. Enough is enough. <laughs> levels at home because of high heating bills, lack of food in the kitchen at their home, but no, we feed them, we heat them, we care for them. I wouldn't go on strike if I didn't really believe that the pay rise that I was given, derisory as it was, shouldn't have come out of their budgets. And it's a shame that any divisiveness is used, and I'm going to walk over that, because you know, we're here strong as unions to support each other and to actually give love to all of those who need it in these times of crisis. So, I've, never, I've been a union member for a long time. I've never known a union so powerful as this. But every day, and as a union rep, people join in my workplace. And that is just amazing. We have the power to turn this around. We have the power to support each other and to be brave in doing so. So, power to the people! Oh, <laughs>